So you keep venomous reptiles or you're thinking of keeping venomous reptiles. First, let's chat to snakebite expert Arnon Odea about this. Hey Murphy. And the age old question, what is the best first venomous snake? In South Africa, I would go for something indigenous and I would go for something that is deadly because it's easier for me to treat you for a puff adder or a cobra or a mamba bite or even a boomslung bite than what it is for me to try and treat you for something like a copperhead or a white lip tree viper. Can't help you with that. We don't have the antivenom for it. We don't, we're going to try our best. So it's best to start with something that you can acquire antivenom for. This may be a bit more difficult, but it is worth it in the long run. Sometimes it's easier to just buy some exotic venomous snake and bring it home and go, oh, I know what I'm doing, or look at me, I'm Rambo. No, it doesn't work like that. What are some of your do's and don'ts when working with venomous snakes? Uh, don't. <laughs> Work with them as, as few times as, as required. So cage maintenance, feeding, and that's it. The rest of the time you don't need to interact with them. People forget about how bad a bite is from a baby. They say babies you know, can't do this, can't do that. Um, I had a big female and she was massive, 1.2 meters. And she, she had babies. Some of them, when they were born, they were still wet. I gave them a hopper mouse. What is they this? Killed it and ate it. Puff adder. Killed and ate it before the baby was dry from being born. And wow. that mouse died as soon as it was bitten. Very few people who even keep exotic venomous snakes know what, what to expect when they get bitten. You know, they get bitten, they phone me and they go, I was bitten by this and this. What's going to happen? I'm going, I don't know. Because even if we take something as silly as a black mamba bite. If somebody phones me and says, listen, I've been bitten by a black mamba, what's going to happen to me? I go, I don't know. You might have a tiny spot that bleeds and you might die and everything in between. It's a, it's a dangerous hobby. It is one of the, one of the very dangerous hobbies. And in most cases, um, if your medical aid don't know that you keep snakes and if your life insurance don't know you keep snakes, they can sometimes say, I'm not going to pay out. In all honesty, you might just feel different once you've seen the flesh falling off your friend's fingers, his back turning black and blue and all colors in between that, and his blood thickening and turning to like a coke color. And you forget that these people can actually hear you when they've got a tube down their throat and they're lying there in total paralysis. And they say, do you know what was the worst? That light in my eye, because every time they wanted to see, my pupils were working, they were fully dilated and this light was in there, which is terrible, and they kept doing it. I'm lying there with this mad headache and I can't do anything about it. And then my nose starts itching. It took two days for me to wake up so I could scratch my nose. Do you know what it's like itching for two days? And they tell you all these gory things and you look at this and you go, I don't want that to happen to me. I've messaged friends before and then start panicking because they aren't responding and you don't know what's happening. And I've been right more than once, unfortunately, because when they aren't responding, they've been envenomated. That's happened more than once. It's scary. Uh, one of the guys said it felt like he was lying on pebbles and they were, they were eating into his back and they don't give you anything for pain because you're not responding to pain. And she kept getting infections and eventually they, they, they cut out the, the finger plus the, the bone behind it and she only had the four fingers on the one hand, which was her dominant hand at the time. She's now had to learn to switch the other hand because she couldn't use that hand properly. And there's, there's now talk about half her hand being amputated, all because of one little bite from Little Mozambique spitter. Now don't get me wrong, I absolutely love all this and it's incredible, but you must understand the risks involved. And once you've lost a close friend, I feel like only then you know how real it is. Like listen to this, this is how Dr. Brian Fry described one of his bites. My skin erupted into countless large hives, turning me into one giant itch. I felt like filleting my skin, but then I was distracted by trying to vomit and breathe at the same time. My esophagus was being constricted to an ever decreasing demeanor due to massive amounts of fluid that was rapidly accumulating around my neck. My body was desperately trying to expel the allergic death protein through every orifice. I spewed all over the dashboard, even down into the vents. I left coffee colored stains on the seat. It's hard to apologize with vomit bubbles coming out of both nostrils, but I gave it a go. 
Halfway to the hospital, I could feel myself going into shock again, this time accompanied by an alarming swelling of the face. My diaphragm muscle was being paralyzed by the neurotoxins. Blue gave way to black. My pupils became dilated and fixed. The lights became very bright and the colors very vivid. I was unable to open my eyelids or move my eyes, so my vision was limited to the times the doctor would manually open my eyelids to look at my pupils. The medical staff had no idea I was conscious and could hear everything they were saying. I just had no way of letting them know I was there. How scary is that? And at the end of that, he said this. It is the calm snake in your collection that you have to watch out for. One never relaxes around a taipan or a black mamba, but it is very easy to relax around venomous landmines like gaboon vipers or death adders. The really basic thing is, I don't want a cowboy looking after venomous snakes because he's going to show off. And as soon as you get someone showing off for the snake, somebody's going to get bitten. Here are some of my rules. Rule number one, don't be stupid. Stupid? Like seriously. Just don't do anything stupid. Rule number two, do not neck a venomous snake. Always find another way, because there is. Find another way. Rule number three, do not handle if there is no capable driver with a capable vehicle at your house, your facility, wherever you're handling venomous snakes, because you will probably not be able to drive yourself to hospital. Even if you aren't allergic to the venom, you can drop just like that. From modified cardiac hormones, which are released in relatively high amounts that affect your blood pressure. These are called natriuretic peptides, which relax vascular smooth muscles, such as the ones surrounding your aorta. So you're just gonna drop. Rule number four, this one took me a few years of keeping before I put it on my rule book. Don't handle venomous reptiles in your reptile room in front of people who are not used to snakes. Why? Because you don't know how they are going to react and they may react in a way, even if you're showing them a very calm snake to prove that venomous snakes are not out there to get you, they may react in a way which throws the snake off and then you have your closest call of your life. Not saying it happened, but yeah, it happened. Before I did it, I was going, you shouldn't be doing this, but you're under pressure. One was, I was actually on a stage, we were doing um, industrial theater to use the snakes as analogies for dangers in, in mines underground. And I couldn't see the snake. Now I asked them to put lights behind me, which shone into the box itself. And I couldn't see the snake's head, but I could see his tail. As I grabbed the tail, the head came out, smacked me on the finger. And as it happened, I realized this was stupid. You should have just left it. But we all make mistakes when we're under pressure. And nothing came of the bite. I was fine. You don't want to get bitten because your body can show up a sensitivity at any time. Same as having snakes spray in your face. You know, spitting snakes the whole time. You breathe it in. You don't realize you're becoming sensitive. If you get bitten by that snake, you're going to drop. That's because after repeated exposure to venom, your body starts to form these things called IgEs, your immunoglobulin E, which is your body overreacting to environmental antigens such as venom. So if you do get bitten by a snake, it makes things much worse because you'll go into anaphylaxis, have an allergic reaction. And I'm really not trying to scare you because at the end of the day, this is what I do. I just want you to be aware of the things that can go wrong because I think far too many people don't actually understand it and just think, oh, these are cool, beautiful animals. And on the flip side of that, there are far too many people that have an ego that kind of think that, oh, this is so cool just because of what other people think about me. I mean, look, I absolutely love them and I do this. So I'm not trying to stop you from doing it. I'm just trying to make you very aware of what could happen the dangers are just very real and you just got to be aware of it before you actually jump into it. And it's better to know what could happen than just be completely oblivious to it because stuff happens. I can give you some of my non-venomous snakes and if you can pick them up and they don't bite you, you can have them. The one cost me probably close to 50,000, but if you can pick him up and he doesn't bite you, you can have him because I promise you he will bite you. 
and it's it's a boa constrictor it's something which are sold in pet stores this one just hates people you might end up with a venomous snake who also just hates people and you end up getting bitten or someone else gets bitten it's not worth the risk I'd like to take you up on that offer. Just give it a try. I don't need the snake, but I want to give it a shot. <laughs> okay, we'll try. Okay, so so this is the snake that apparently I will get to keep if I pick it up. Don't worry, I'm not going to keep it, but if I get if I get to pick it up without being tagged. And it has been moved into a new enclosure recently, which does change things up, so it probably won't bite me, but as you can see, it it is some um, yeah, it does want to bite me. Come on. Oh, now he's got me, so if I get bitten, it's my fault, cause, or his fault. Well, there we go. Now I've got a very expensive snake, or it's got me. I don't know which one. Okay, put it back, let's see. There we go. But you tired it out before you picked it up. I didn't tire it out, I just took my time. Learned what the animal will do and then reacted accordingly and didn't get tagged, thankfully.